Alright, we've talked about some resources for learning HTML. What we're going to do next is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to discuss some terminology that will be important for you to be aware of as we go through this course. The first bit of terminology has to do with XHTML and HTML, and it has to do with tags. So here I have um, just an example of a little bit of uh, code, XHTML, XHTML code. And basically this is an opening div tag with a class assigned to it. This would be my content, and here's my closing div tag. And then I have an opening image tag, which is pointing to some picture and it also has an alt tag. And you can see that this tag is being closed with the space slash closing bracket because there is no closing specific closing bracket for the image tag. So basically when we're talking about XHTML, we have three parts of the tag. We have the elements, and the elements are basically the little labels that identify and structure the different parts of a web page. This specific thing, in this example, we have a div and an image. Those are the elements of these particular tags. It could be a header, it could be a paragraph, whatever. Um, certain elements have attributes which further describe and purpose the content. So every element has a start tag and has an end tag. Even those even those elements that look like standalone elements, such as the image tag, they have the slash that designates the end tag for certain elements. Most elements in XHTML contain um, some sort of content, and like the text appearing between the div tags, like we have in this example right here, elements um, such as this are called non-replaced elements. The image tag, however, represents an Ill image element which is called a replaced element. And what that means is basically this element points to another resource that will appear at the element's location when the document is rendered in the browser. The content is within the tag inside of a replaced element. So it's basically replacing what the element is. So just know what elements are. The next um, part of a tag that we're going to talk about is the attributes. And attributes basically describe certain aspects of the elements themselves. They contain information about the data in the document as opposed to being data itself. Um, in XHTML, an attributes value is always enclosed in quotation marks. So here you can see the value of the class attribute is leader the value of the source attribute is pic.jpg, and the value of the alt tag is description. Both the div tag and the image tag here have attributes, um, and then they describe something about that particular element. So that's what's going on right here. And finally, we have the values. The values, every attribute has a value, even if it's an empty value. Now this is, does not show an example of any empty values. Values are always displayed with the equal sign and they always appear in quotes, even if the value is empty. So it is possible for me to have an alt tag that might have a value of open quote, close quote. That is still a valid value, but it has to have the quotes, it has to have the equal signs. So these are the parts of a XHTML tag. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna understand CSS terminology. So here, I have an example of a CSS rule. This is for the H3 tag and it's assigning a color value and the font size. Basically, a CSS rule is made up of two parts. It's made up of the selector, which states, states which tag the rule selects, in this case H3, or which rule the selector tag targets, and the declaration, which basically is stating what happens when the rule is applied. The declaration is made up of two separate elements, a property, which, state, which states what is to be affected, and a value, which states what the property is set to. So let's look at these a little bit more in depth. The rule is basically a pairing of selector and declaration blocks. In this line of code, this is shown as a rule because it combines both selector and a declaration block. So a selector is basically the element 
of the document that is going to have this specific, specific declaration applied to it. Here the H3 selector means all H3 elements are going to take on the color and font size properties and values that are defined in this particular declaration block. The declaration is basically the property value pair. So here the pairing of color is paired with hex value 333. It's paired as a single declaration. When you have multiple declarations that are listed together, then that is defined as a declaration box. So both of these declarations together make a declaration box. One single declaration is just called a declaration. So a declaration box is just a group of declarations. It's always surrounded by the curly braces. So you have the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. Not to be confused with these turquoise curly braces. They're just showing you what the declaration is. The orange curly braces are the ones that are defining our declaration block. And the curly braces are basically the beginning and ending points of the declaration block. Just like semicolons are the ending points of a single declaration. Every rule has only one declaration block. The property is basically the, it's describing an, um, an aspect of the element's presentation. So in this case, color would be a property, or font size would be a property, um, or border width. In CSS 2.1, it basically has about 138 properties. A property is always followed by a value and they are always separated by a semicolon. So after every property value pair, you always follow by a semicolon. And you can basically list as many declarations, which are property value pairs, in a declaration block as need be. Finally, the value is basically the whatever our property is specified as, the value is what it's going to be set to. So a value is a descriptor that defines a specific appearance, such as the color name, the measurement, the percentage value, or you know many, many other values that you could assign depending on the specific property. Um, the values here, 333 3, 3, and 12 pixels, are going to define font size and color of H3 you always follow a value by a semicolon, and that creates the declaration. So those are the parts of the CSS rule. You should be familiar with these because we'll be talking with them a lot more as the course continues.